morning, wonderful ladies, and welcome to Transform Her Learning Hub for Women. Uh, we have this Knowledge Nugget series every month, and we touch upon different topics on a monthly basis, right, for the five days. And our uh, initiative from the last month has been the Power Hour with our special guest. And today, we have our special guest, uh, Dr. Kuljeet Uppal. Kuljeet, I'm so happy to have you here. It, it's it's fabulous that you have been able to take some time and be here with us today. I'm sure uh, women on this group are going to get some inputs and some amazing tips from you, right? Thank you so much for having me here, Tejaswini. I've been excited ever since you told me about your entire project and what you've been working on. So I'm so delighted to be here today. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm happy. Yeah, I'll be happy as well. And just before we begin, as usual, let me first you know welcome all our members and thank them for being a part of transform her the learning hub for women we are in the facebook live knowledge nugget series and i'm so 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 excited so but if we have never met before even for the women on the group if you have never met me also before and you are you're logging in for the first time or you have just joined the group uh, maybe last week and you have not seen much of what's happening on the group let me give a short introduction and then we move to kuljeet our special guest right so hi i'm tejaswini pasar i'm a business strategist a transformation expert and the author of 10 secrets to enrich your entrepreneurial journey and you will find the link of the book coming to you soon if you are new to the group it will come into your messenger most of the people who are a part of the group must have received it by now and that's great great to have you all here so let me reiterate transform her is an initiative to energize empower and elevate women to take inspired action grow their brand build an impact and build a business or a career and a life they love and my ultimate goal and mission for this group is to share knowledge, to share expertise, to share success, failures, and some actionable strategies to help you achieve your goals and your dreams. And that's where we see the self-improvement 365 series that is going on that is all towards helping you achieve your goals, right? Kunjit, I am so delighted that we have you with here today. And with a couple of minutes where I put in the introduction, I just make sure that I'm giving a little opportunity for people who are entering in late. So I just take those two, three minutes at the beginning so that people don't lose on what we have to talk about you and you have to talk with all of us, right? Okay, so. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So ladies, let me give you a quick introduction of our guest today. And uh, of course, I mean, it, it's like such an honor to have Kuljeet here. And if I have to give her introduction, I mean, I really need to read it out because it is not just one or two or three or four things that I keep in my mind. It's like the whole bunch of achievements that she has. And and she is a polymath. So let's let's look at uh, you know what she has done and why she has been the world's first image scientist. And she's a genius polymath. Okay, welcome Kuljeet, and let me let me share uh, what she has done. Okay, so Kuljeet has been honored with several awards for excellence in the world for innovation, education, and social impact including the prestigious award of World Innovation Award, which is the Hall of Fame honor. That was in the year 2019 for innovation. And uh, she's been into the education field. So Educational Leadership Award for Excellence in Social Innovation and Global Impact in 2019 is one more feather in the cap for her. Um, the World Education Award in 2018 for innovation again for Nari Ud what is that? Udaymit Puraskar. Nari Udyamita Puraskar. Udyamita Puraskar. That was again in 2018 by the MSME, that is the Small and Medium uh, Scale Enterprises, the Ministry, and WES, and has also been, uh, yeah, she's received these esteemed honor of Karamvir Chakra Award by the United Nations and in Congo, as well as a national icon of 2020. And the pride of Maharashtra in 2017. Oh my God, Kuljit, this is amazing. This is lovely. So she moves from Pune to national to international. And 
that's great. Karma Veer Chakra Award is something which you know you you know, ladies, it's something that when you are set apart, when you do something really remarkable, that's when you go there. And, uh, and that's what Kuljit has been doing. So uh, then there is this a list, you know. So WICC National, I'm going to be reading this out because, uh, yeah, that's quite a long list. WICC National President, Life Skills and All India Chairperson for Image Management, as well as the Board as Advisor for uh, International Creative Women. She works towards bringing about uh, policies and creating a robust ecosystem for empowerment of women globally. I think this is an amazing work that she's putting in this space. And uh, it's, it's lovely because I know what type of dedication and what type of um, you know time and energy one needs to really put when you are on, on such missions, right? Um, Kulji, that's remarkable, I should say. She has also been awarded with the esteemed Inspirational Polymath Award, being an image scientist and aviator, oh my God, an entrepreneur, a creative director, an author, and an educationist. Amongst other um, you know, things she's done, she's also been in the Asia Book of Records, that's the World Record of India, Bharat Book of World Records, and India Book of Records for whole, you know, for the first image scientist uh, what do you what do you call that? It's it's behind your name, right? It's like a tag. It's it's for her. It's she's the first one, you know, and that's where she goes on to all those record books. So, world's number one image scientist, Dr. Kuljit Upal, has researched and created innovative concepts like Prime. She's going to be talking about that today. There's something called as D Prime. What is what's the other one? Prime. D Prime Kimia. Premier and, yeah, and, and yeah. Okay, these yeah. are some uh, technical concepts, I believe, and she'll be talking about that and sharing more about this because that's a topic on which she's going to be, going to be really throwing light on and uh, work with uh, us or tell us more about what she really does in this space. So having this uh, persona, the image quotient, and has been applauded all over the world for her work. This amazing impact strategist has made India proud in her area, apart from just being an inspirational human uh, humanitarian who has been impacting thousands of lives globally on her mission to make a powerful difference on the persona and the image of individuals and enhancing their life skills across the globe. So this is an amazing work that uh, Kujit puts in. And uh, I would say, you know what, getting you on to the Transform Her pa uh, platform is really, really an honor to the women on the group and to me as well, because that's where the connection really happens. That's where I think women also need to look at this angle and this side of it. And uh, definitely that's important. So Kuljit, I'm so happy to host you on the Learning Hub today. And uh, let's take it Thank over you. and uh, get, uh, you get talking now and tell us about yeah. your story. Tell us how did you get into this being an image scientist? Firstly, thank you for all the kind words. And once again, thank you for having me here. And it's a delight always because when I interact with women, I just feel a little more empowered. And I know your audience is with beautiful, energetic women right there who are probably listening and probably some men also, I don't know. But uh, regardless, I think they're all young, enthusiastic people who want to make a difference in their lives and they talk of power. So I think you and I resonate on one frequency that both of us talk of power. You do it in your way, I do it in my way, but we're both trying to make sure that people get more powerful. As far as my story goes, um, well, it's a very long story because when you're in the other half of your, you know, uh, half a century, then the story is really long, but I'm going to try and keep it as brief as I can so that I uh, stay more connected with the topic. Uh, so I basically, I think over the years, I've hailed from a defense services background. And because of my father being in the Air Force and later, of course, my husband also was an army officer, so this lifestyle of constantly changing from place to place uh, and trying to adjust with new, uh, shall I say, environments, with new people, that became like an inherent thing after a period of time. Mm -hmm. You know you, how you adjust because you're not just focused onto one place. So be it languages, be it uh, 
geographies, be it, uh, you know, the entire setup completely getting disrupted in one and then getting adjusted to a brand new atmosphere. So I think that inherently becomes a part and parcel of your life, which somewhere has helped me to do a lot of things. But more than that, I think while I was a child, I was told by my father that I was always very curious. And I think that bug called curiosity has still stayed on. It still is there very much in me. And I'm very happy that it kind of lingers on because that bug made me an avid learner. And mm -hmm. I treat myself as an avid learner all the while, regardless of what I would have learned or what people believe that I've accomplished. I still say I'm a learner and I will stay a learner for my life. And I think that underlying truth has made me again grow and you know look at possibilities wherever I've gone. And I think that's very important because when you want to be an achiever, not that I ever planned that I would be an achiever, it's come because of the virtue of just wanting to keep on learning. So as you realize that you keep learning, you keep growing, you're investing time for yourself, you just keep expanding your horizons in terms of knowledge and experience. So that's exactly what's happened over the years. And uh, yes, as far as I'm concerned, like I said, the curiosity bug, I realized that I I was kind of pushing myself into areas which went just beyond academics. Uh, I landed up uh, doing sports, dance, like a classical dance. I mean, I'm a Kathak and Bharatanatyam dancer. So that uh, getting into singing because I was singing professionally alongside. I've done a lot of advertisements and, you know, I used to sing on stage and things like that. I sing in 14 different languages. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was another thing. Then, Academics, in any case, was part of it. But apart from that, I know that my parents would always tell me, don't don't sleep in the day. Invest your time doing something that you've not done earlier. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really great. Uh, we as you know, people who are older and we have kids probably today, I think that's a great learning. At that point in time as a child, uh, I have never slept in the afternoons. I mean, I don't even recall. So at that point in time, I would often wonder why would my mom or my dad always tell me, you know, don't sleep during the day. Just do something. But I'm so happy they did that because uh, it just helped me get into so much more. I mean, be it uh, gardening or be it doing uh, carpentry or doing uh, pottery or doing tie and dye, block printing. I just have explored everything, including lots of cooking and baking. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy that thing that set in very early in life actually stayed on as a habit. They say it takes 21 days to create a habit. This is like more than 21 years. <laughs> so for sure, definitely building a lot of habits. Yeah, but I think all in all, it worked well for me. Mm -hmm. And my learning, uh, you know, the craving to learn got me, of course, educating myself and picking up a few degrees here and there till ultimately I have like masters in a few different areas apart from management. So I landed up, uh, you know, with a master's in English literature, in journalism, in mass comm. I've done psychometrics, I've done NLP, I've done a lot of things. So I've just been learning, mind mapping and whatnot. And even today, there's so much more to learn, right? So that journey goes on and on. Um, anyway, to cut the story short in terms of that background, coming to cut to, which is why did I become an image scientist and how was that journey? So in three decades of my work life, which expanded across various industries, as you said, I'm also an aviator, right? It started with flying, moving into advertising, then into journalism and media and all of that, and then into education per se. So one thing that came to my attention, which became a turning point in one way, was that no matter whichever industry I was part of, no matter who I engaged with across the table, when I say across the table as in interviews or even in plain interactions and however senior or junior a person was i saw a common denominator mm. that common denominator was that of lack of confidence lack of self-esteem lack of presentation lack of communication lack of just being able to make an impact in any which way mm. and that kind of went to a level where it started bothering me and i was like why does it happen how come i'm seeing this rampant across industries across levels, across profiles, across ages. And there seems to be nothing that's happening on that front. Mm. We're all very well-educated per se in the way the education system brings us. You know, yeah. so vocationally we are perfect and all of that. We have all that. But what about these skills? And that's when I said, okay, you know, time to do something. If nothing is happening, I got this calling that I probably am going to be that force of God that will make a difference to people around me. Then, of course, I think your most uh, people are familiar with uh, Fiki's Summit 2013, which said that by the year 2030, India will be one of the youngest nations in the world. One out of four 
graduates in the world would be a product of the Indian higher education system. Mm -hmm. That's not my years, and that was the time I was researching. So I was like, okay, this is just kind of, you know, the jigsaw puzzle is getting better and better. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm able to tune it around. And I said, okay, I chucked my job. I was sitting in a very plush, lovely job, sitting as global head of an MNC, handling all of academics and curriculum and training and, you know, you name it, and it was there. And I just said, okay, time to move on. This is the time I address my calling. Now, sadly and ironically for me, when I started looking at what can I do to make that difference, I realized that there was no seminal work that had happened in this area. There was just nothing at all. So I said, okay, fine, time to get it in my own way. Let me start researching. So I got into my PhD mode much later in life. When most people say, and in fact, even in, <laughs> at home, I remember my mom saying, are you nuts? Why would you want to do a PhD at this point in time? And I was like, why? What do you mean? None. Mean, age has got no barrier there, right? You can learn forever. So I kind of challenged all odds. But yes, it did have a lot of challenge for me because when you are working for so many years, suddenly to get into a hardcore student mode becomes a huge thing. You have lost the skill to be able to memorize, you know, definitions to, like they say, you know, be a parrot of sorts, how Indian higher education system typically teaches you that, not just higher education education system teaches you that. I had lost all those skills. But what I had with me was tons of rationality and tons of perspective. So anyway, I pursued the PhD because I believe that whatever I bring to the world should not be a simple Google copy paste because I think mm -hmm. a lot of people do that today. And I feel a little saddened because the craving to produce content, which is empirically tested, scientifically devised, is not as prevalent as it should be. But anyway, for me, I chose that path, though it was the tougher of the two, that I will not go by just what people believe or what they think. You know, they just kind of write some articles. Uh, there are people who are putting in anything and everything as literature on the, uh, you know, on the World Wide Web. And I was like, no, this is, this is not fair. Because if I'm going to deliver something, it has to be scientifically driven. Mm -hmm. And so I went into, into the in-depth study of psychology, sociology, anthropology, semiotics, design, aesthetics, communication, mathematics, statistics, all of that. And for many years, while I researched, I realized, like I said, there was no seminal work. So I was creating a new structure, a new science. And I started from ground zero. So there was lots that went into it. I have burnt midnight oil like crazy for years together. But I have pulled myself from the rest of the world. And I was only focused to making sure that I get out something meaningful for the audience. And that's where I was. And I created the science of print. That is persona and image management. And as luck would have it, like I said, sometimes, you know, sometimes we're so focused and consumed about ourselves. We forget the abundance of oxygen that's around us. But if you just focus on doing your stuff, results happen. So by the time I had finished my PhD, the second day of having been conferred with that title of Dr. Kuljeet Upal, I got a call from some people who came to know that here was this woman who had been researching something brand new. And world records start coming my way. So I was like, wow. And of course, they, they had their own process where they established that, you know, you are the first one in that area, blah, 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 all of that. So that's their own thing. And it started happening. And I, here I was, a lady sitting in Pune in India, became the first image scientist in the world. So I was very happy because I brought my country onto the global platform. So wow. that gives me a lot of pride. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Absolutely, absolutely an honor. And it, yeah, I can understand when you say you have burnt midnight oil, these type of uh, results. Uh, yeah, they don't come easy. It's not a thing. They don't come easy. It, it <laughs> takes a lot of drilling. It takes a lot of perseverance. And the yeah. best part, you know, people don't realize till the time you're in your master's, you still have lectures that happen. You still have uh -huh. some kind of accountability with your professor. In the PhD, you're on your own. Yeah. You may have a guide, but that guide just signs, you know, it's, it, it, she's more of a signatory for you. But mm -hmm. what you do is completely on a self-ignition mode. So it's not easy to keep yourself charged. You stumble, you fall, you come across suddenly big, tall walls in front of you. And you're like, oh, my God, now what? I don't know how to go ahead. But you have to crack it open. If you're that passionate about doing it, you will do it the right way. And you will come across and get solutions. Because I've always believed where there's a problem, there is a solution. All True. you need to do is look for it. That's all. Yeah. So that's exactly how it happened. And so this whole journey of Prim came in. And here I am today, trying to make my difference to the youth and the women of the world. 
Superb, superb. And I think your curious attitude right from the childhood is something which has made a lot of difference in the entire journey uh, that has gone the way, right? Because research and all that you do is out of curiosity. When you're curious to know something, you really walk that extra mile and ensure all your questions are really answered. I think that's one Yes. Once I think um, I don't know whether to call it a skill or a trait or what, but that's absolutely required for you know <laughs> for us to stay alive and to stay really lively to be able to do something or make a difference. That's that's fantastic. So it's so what, what gave me happiness, they just Vinny, was the fact that what I started off to do, at least today I have some scientific content to create. And not just uh -huh. create what I have, I'm giving to people. So I know mm -hmm. that it's tested because in the whole research circle you test the entire models that you created. I've created mathematical models. And I know that at the end of the day, and even my invention, the first PIQ in the world, which is persona and image quotient. Mm -hmm. People have heard of IQ and EQ. So what I brought to the world as a gift is PIQ, where you can judge your persona and your image quotient based on that uh, entire assessment tool. I've okay. had it in the manual shape for a while now, many, many years. Uh, but uh, I'm in fact in the mode of uh, getting it out on the on my website. It's there, but there's a kind of a, a raw structure, if I may say, but it will be out very soon. And uh, anyone sitting anywhere in the world can, you know, assess herself or himself on the persona and image quotient. Where do they stand and they can improve themselves further? Yeah. <laughs> we would definitely love to have the link so that we can go and check our PIQ <laughs> and what it is. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. And, um, Wow, that's really great. So we have a lot of women on the group. We have a mixture of women who are working. We have um, women who are um, who have their own businesses, solopreneurs, or somebody who's running companies. So it's it's a combination. It's a mix of people okay. that we have here. And uh, just want to know what are your thoughts on the importance of like what we said. You want to talk about the brand called you. Uh, how do you plug that in with small business owners or somebody who's working? Could you just throw some light around that? All right. So, um, and I, I might take a few more minutes than. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, fine, Maybe because it's listen to you. <laughs> more of more of de depth, I guess. So um, now there are a few things. When we talk of Prim, first I'll talk about Prim so that I can relate it to the brand. Um, hmm. So when we're talking of Prim, it's it's a process which is an ongoing one. It's a continual one. It's not an overnight thing that you just put yourself into it and you think you're going to get results. It's literally like breathing. How mm. breathing becomes an innate part of you, you handle your image in a certain way. So mm. you have to constantly keep evaluating and controlling the impact you're making. Now, when I'm saying impact you're making, I mean you're, you as an entity, you as a brand, you in entirety. So it's not only about appearance. More than often, people mistake image to be everything about just, you know, surfacial stuff, how you dress and how your hairstyle is and all of that. Well, that's a small part of it, but that's not the whole and wholesome unit but then i don't blame people who talk about that because they've not studied or researched so they pretty much mm -hmm. believe that image is all about you know just the surfacial part but that's mm -hmm. not the point mm -hmm. uh, so prim actually because it's persona and image so it talks in the in depth of your personality along with the exterior part which is the image part right in terms of but mm -hmm. the larger gamut of activities revolves everything around you and the impact you're making on people mm -hmm. now when you view yourself as a person you must view yourself as a brand, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And it's very, very important. You remember always that you are the front face of your product. You're the front face of your company. When somebody hears of, of your product, that person first engages with you because probably you are the front face, like I said, especially if you've just started. You may not have your team sending out the signals. You would be the carrier of that information. So it becomes very important that in that impact that you're making to the people around you, to the perceiver, you are doing a fabulous job in such a way that you're able to engage, that you're able to get that fruitful result. Now, how will you do that? So there are multiple ways. So keeping in mind the image angle, okay, when I'm talking of Prim. So we talk of n number of ways where you can control, evaluate, and then create the impact. Let me just tell you a few things. There are some basic shall I say, uh, you know, uh, parameters or thumb rules that you need to always bear in mind when it comes to you as a image, you know, mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. Firstly, your image or your prim is an amalgamation of your self-image. Okay. 
the perceived image and the received image. Uh, let me just elaborate. So the self image is all about what you perceive about yourself. Uh, what do you think of yourself in terms of um, what do you think you are as a, as a person? So it will start with as basic as your body image. There are a lot of people who have a lot of thoughts about the way they look in terms of actual, the, you know, the physicality of your body. So whether you're fat or you're thin or you're tall or you think your nose is not good enough or uh, you have a little punch or whatever, all that leads you to start believing something about your self-image. That self-image will further impact your self-esteem. Now, what I'm sharing with you, by the way, are the developmental levels of self. It's a psychology concept, which I just want to quickly go past. It will help them understand better, uh, all the viewers, in fact. So we are talking of how important it is at every level to make sure that you are not breaking that chain. All right. So when we're talking of what you believe in terms of your body image, I don't know how many people have the, uh, you know, the happiness to go in front of the mirror and give themselves a flying kiss and say, I love you. Mm. I don't know how many people do. If you're not, you should probably start doing it. Start loving yourself. So it starts with first loving your own body in the way you are. Everybody has imperfections. Everybody. You ask the Miss Universe, she will also count down at least a couple of items where she say she will probably say, nah, this probably could be better, etc. etc. So the fact is, when that is just a myth that there is perfection, accept yourself with your imperfections. That's very, very important. That's the starting point to ensure that you are strengthened from within. And then move on because once you have a good body image, it will lead to your better self-image and then to your self-esteem, as I said, which leads you to, for, to a higher self-confidence and then higher self-competence and then eventually the self-actualization of your goals. So that journey which leads you through age and experience has to be pursued in a very serious manner. You could be any place. Maybe you don't have body image issues. Maybe you have issues somewhere else, maybe in self-esteem mm -hmm. somewhere. But that's a whole cycle which I don't want to elaborate True. here further. True. But what yeah. I'm saying is it's important that you understand when you are creating a powerful image for yourself, a powerful prim, the entire skill of managing yourself is prim, right? So if you want to have a great prim, you want to have a powerful image about yourself, you need to ensure that this cycle that I've just spoken of, this echelon is taken care of so that you are ready to take on uh, sure. all the challenges ahead. Once you're sorted in that premise, that's when you are ready for the outside world. Mm -hmm. Now, you may ask me, you know, how do I do this? This is easily said, but it's very tough for me to engage on that premise. So there are, there are ways to do it. But if I just have to cut that really short, Maybe a good thing would be assessing yourself and taking opinions from people so that you know where you stand, largely mm -hmm. speaking, and then go on further. I think keeping in mind all this, you start carving out a certain brand for yourself, which means what? I will tell you a sentence and I want all your viewers to, you know, kind of listen to the sentence very carefully. You cannot not communicate. I'll repeat that. You cannot not communicate, which means what? You are constantly communicating. Every single second, every minute, you are emitting a message to your perceiver. Okay? Sure. If that be the case, it becomes extremely important that you measure and you evaluate and you control the message you're trying to send across to your perceiver. And that is extremely important. More than often, we make a mistake in terms of the communication that we're making to the perceiver. In, in our words, you know, the world, whoever. On social media, I guess it's just the world, right? Or yeah. for uh, entrepreneurs, it would be the public. They are, you know, engaging with their clients or whoever. So it's extremely important to understand that whatever be your chosen path in terms of your values, your beliefs, the, the message you want to communicate, you want people to believe that about you, uh, that comes across in a strong and persistent manner. So all mm -hmm. that that I spoke of in terms of the self-image, and the perceived image is, of course, the, what the perceiver is going to perceive out of all of this. And then you will project a certain image. So all of that, that amalgamation takes care of your crib, the, all the three angles. So and while I say all this, it sounds simplified, but there's a lot of scientific structuring that goes into all of this uh, for people who are completely lost as to how to do this. <laughs> but regardless, it is possible for most people at their own normal you know, functional levels to kind of address this issue. 
Now, when it comes to the branding, I want to make a point here that let's not confuse personal branding with prim. These are two separate things. True. Have you ever come across situations in life when, uh, you know, people say, like, let's say some XYZ, you know, person who is a, a, a person who's a social influencer or a celebrity or someone, and you have a perception about that person just out of maybe a film star, let's say, uh, that you're watching on screen and you start building a notion in your head this person is a, looks like a very nice person he looks like a very homely guy mm -hmm. or you know he's, he's really nice he's kind etc etc it could be even the other way around whatever be it okay or someone who's playing a villain who you start having a, a different impression about mm -hmm. right so now mm -hmm. let's say hypothetically you happen to be that person actually maybe mm -hmm. at an airport mm -hmm. or some function or social event and now you realize that what you thought about that person is not exactly what this person is saying uh -huh. in the way he's carrying himself in the his clothing be it the way his body language is in what he's actually saying in terms of utterance and suddenly things come crashing down and you're like oh my god i always thought this person was like that and look uh -huh. at what he turned out to be now this has happened i think in most people's lives i would typically believe pretty much a vast majority you suddenly come across a person and there comes everything breaking down. Now, that's what's happening when you're doing PR work. An agency will handle your work. You can, you can be handled by a group of people who believe that it is good to project yourself in a certain manner. Mm -hmm. And so you're branding yourself in a certain manner. Now, mm -hmm. everyone who's listening to me should ensure that they do not get into that cycle. Do not brand yourself. Brand your product. You as a brand must stick with Prim because... Prim engages with you undergoing a change and then coming up to one final realization in tandem with your value system, in tandem with what you believe is your way ahead. You choose that. You choose your message and then live your life accordingly. You don't have to have a facade. So the first thing and the first rule of Prim is authenticity. Mm -hmm. So if you are authentic, you're an authentic representation of yourself, you can't go wrong there. Absolutely. There will be a person who's going to connect with you. When I meet people, I'm exactly like this, the way I am. I've met you, Tejasvini. You have seen me, right? And I'm exactly the way I am. I don't need to have a facade because this is me. And this is the way I'm accepted by people because that's exactly what I am. So it's very important to not have a facade and don't have to be fake. There was a research recently done, not recently, actually, it was done a few years ago on you know how people get onto Facebook, for example, or various kinds of social media mm -hmm. and convey something different about themselves. Now, here you are impacting the brand. Now, if you are not that person, but you're trying to project yourself, you will face the same thing that I just shared. You know, when somebody meets you, they're going to have, you know, uh, mixed thoughts about, OK, she's not or he's not like that. We don't want that to happen. But if you've sorted out your entire communication with regard to Prim, keeping that as your base, in terms of creating that brand about you, being authentic and also being appropriate, which means if you are in a certain occasion, like let's say you're in your uh, office and you have a meeting with a client, your communication pattern, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you behave, all that changes. You can't compare the same with when you're going to bed or you're talking to your children at home, right? It's not going to happen the same way. It's different. So you're being appropriate, which means occasion related. So how you talk to your internal team, vis-a-vis -vis how you talk to a client, there's a different set of words you will use. There's a different profiling. You might want to wear a jacket that day when you're talking to a client. You may not want to do the same when you're talking to your team. So I'm just saying there's appropriateness. But whatever be it, the brand that you're trying to define for yourself must roll out with authenticity. That's the key. That's the key so that you don't get it wrong. It's Absolutely. extremely important. So be it your verbal skills, your body language, your clothing, your etiquette, your uh, grooming, and the self-concept, what you think of yourself. Self-concept is the rational mental picture you have about yourself. All of that put together can, becomes your brand, the prim brand that you become. And sure. that should be, like I said, completely authentic. So I would suggest everybody to do this exercise of trying to reinvent themselves, reboot yourselves. If you're not doing it, just reboot and you know get into the new version of what you will define as a brand, but you have to do a good job of it. 
because you want to make the money eventually by selling your products, by selling your concepts, services, whatever it is. So you have to ensure that you do a good job. of it. True, true. I can so relate to what you're saying. And uh, I, I know Kuljit, when I'm working with women, I have seen typically the mirror exercise that you talked about. This is one thing I use big time in my, uh, you know, coaching with people. And I have got this invariably, you know, it's very difficult for people to do this, to look into the mirror, to look, look yeah. into their own <laughs> own eyes and say that they love themselves and that's where the whole game the internal game really changes so yes. it's a very uh, it's a million dollar advice and it, it really uh, it's tough to do i know how tough it is and i i know what courage it really takes but then uh, yes that's that's the way it is and that's how you start uh, you know building your brand i i can so relate for yes. fabric Fabulous, fabulous input. That's really, really nice to, uh, you know, I think you pretty much elaborated on your um, area of expertise. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and you know what? We always see there are certain common mistakes that, um, that entrepreneurs do uh, while they represent themselves. Like, as you exactly said, it's all about the internal yeah. stuff and then goes to your product or the service or whatever. But also, I, I personally feel there has to be some sort of uh, connection uh, when, you know, you are representing your brand, yourself, versus whatever you are selling, you know. Somewhere there has to be that, uh, uh, the authenticity or the way it goes, the way people will look at you. So you can't be, a, uh, you know, a... Uh, uh, director in an IT company and really go uh, like as though uh, you know you are someone who's selling something which is absolutely uh, to do with a very very small type of a business or something like that or or maybe you are something which uh, maybe you are you are into the jewelry brand or you are into the clothing brand so people are going to look at all these things when they look at you as well so you, you cannot afford to not do it for yourself and uh, you know, and then try to show something, right? Uh, tell me, what are the mistakes? Typically, this is what I see while I'm working with women. But uh, are there any specific things that you have observed uh, while you um, want to build up on their brand or on their product or whatever? Okay, so I would say there are lots of mistakes, actually, that people make, but that comes out of lack of knowledge. They're not mm -hmm. aware. Uh, and, of course, sometimes they just miss it out because nobody's taught them that, right? Like I just mm -hmm. said. So, uh, more than often, I've realized just small little things, just very, very small little things, basics. Um, when you're an entrepreneur, there is a whole wide world of things that you need to do. It's not limited to just one or two tasks, right? It's a huge world out there that you have now welcomed for yourself. And it's not that you're going to put an effort only for one day. It's an ongoing journey. Yeah. So it becomes so important, like I just shared, in terms of authenticity, that firstly, the connection between you as the front face of your product and the product they have to align as you said Absolutely. have you aligned there's something called a brand personality if people have done their exercise uh in terms of when you brand your product you've created your product fine but how do you create a brand personality how do you make sure that you pigeonhole your product in the right space of your actual most authentic consumer have you done that or not so those are all the marketing exercises that i feel a lot many people ignore it's extremely important because you may work on yourself, no doubt, but somewhere down, if you haven't aligned your product, the values that you're trying to pull out for whatever you want to sell as a you know service or a product, whatever be it, if they haven't aligned with you or you haven't aligned with it, there's mm -hmm. going to be a mismatch right there. So in every which way, there has to be firstly that alignment of making sure you spend time, figure out your brand. And if you think you don't have the expertise, engage with expertise in such a way that you can get an actual good ad and marketing strategy so that you know what your brand is going to be resonating. That's why I said brand personality, because then the brand personality and you can kind of work in symphony. And that's very important. Other than that, I've seen in terms of just personal skills, a lot of people, a lot of people, and that's why I said, <laughs> you can see the emphasis that I'm saying, a lot of people that have really noticed this, the basic skills of how do you communicate? You know, we don't even use the right words. Most young entrepreneurs, it's very interesting because I'm a, uh, I'm an advisor with a lot of uh, incubation cells for startups. So mm -hmm. when I kind of, you know, 
do these random mock sessions with them, I realized that in just two sentences, they can't even talk enough about the brand to be able to kind of push it across. So yeah. the first exercise is learn to introduce yourself correctly and learn to introduce your product. I think most people, they ramble for words. It's always left to they claim game. Mm. You know, we'll figure it out. A casual so you have to say that even if I wake you up at 3 a.m. in the morning and mm. I say, okay, tell me what's your pitch. You just go tap, 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 even in your sleep. It has to be that perfect. So I think practice is something that is hugely missing in a lot of entrepreneurs. And we need to practice, practice everything. The art of being able to actually stand in front of the mirror and doing this. So that you see how does your face look? How are you moving your hands? How are you pitching? Are you listening to yourself? How do you look? How do you stand? Let's say you're talking to someone in a social event. You're standing. You're not going to suddenly go and sit in a chair and say, okay, now I'm going to make a pitch because I practiced on a chair. You're not going to do that. So be it in whichever situation, randomly being able to do this. And that will only come with practice, practice, and practice. True. The more you practice, the better you get at it. Then ensuring that you are able to network well. I think a lot of women are falling short there. I don't think they understand the skill to network really. And network is not just going, being there at social events. More than often, people believe that it is just, oh, there's a social event. Let me go there and carry a lot of visiting cards and, you know, keep talking and giving my visiting card to people, collecting visiting cards and then start sending out emailers. Oh my God, that's completely just not happening. If that's what your perception about networking is, then that's not it. In fact, interestingly, I just want to share with you, Tejas Vinny, I don't know if I told you, but I'm uh, releasing my book, by the way, Prim and Powerful, which is everything to do with this subject. And in fact, one chapter is on networking. How can you be a strategic yeah. networker yeah. in that? Yeah. So maybe if they want to grab a copy, it's going to get released when the printers are functional again, of course. So I think it'll take a month or so, I guess, before it happens. Regardless, but what I'm trying to say is improve on your networking skills. There's a whole gamut and there's a serious stuff of how you network and how you build a structure to network. So I think that is a skill which people have to develop and uh, grow forward so that they actually uh, are able to take advantage of, you know, all these things and grow and leverage their products better. I don't know too many people who are able to do that, honestly. Um, sure. No, exactly. I can relate to it. And, you know, the, one of the live sessions that we're having on uh, today's Tuesday, right, on Thursday is all about meaningful networking. I oh, mean, lovely. that's why we do it. The fact is that, yes, it's so important, but very, very few people understand that. And uh, the way we understand is completely different than what actually it has to go like and you know and then, and then apart from that women are facing a lot of challenges when it comes to networking so of course i'm yes, going to add up with the you know book that you have probably there'll be more inputs around there and yeah and of course you have a lot about prim itself so there's a lot of en engaging exercises within that and i have not written it like a scientist no i chose <laughs> i chose to write that for the common person so that they can just connect with me as if they're having tea with me that's about and it just know how it's spoken yeah. language so that's, <laughs> yeah, that's how it was. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So we have got some amazing tips like being authentic, you know, doing some work around that, working, all these things. Thank you so much, you know, Kuljeet. I think while I was going to ask you the last question about you, the, you know, the tips for our listeners, I think you have already given a lot of tips in all, uh, you know, the discussion that we have had. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, thank you, thank you. I want to say one more thing also with regard to women. I am firstly kudos to all the ladies who are already entrepreneurs, but the ones who are kind of in that transition right now or just kind of thinking, I just want to tell them this, that you must dare to dream. Dare to dream. If you've decided, it's come like how I took a, I just got into action mode. The moment I had the calling, I was like, okay, time has come. I have to do something. So if you're even thinking, considering entrepreneurship, it's a great place to be in. You become a master of yourself, you know, all the things that you want to do. And it's a great space. So that's Absolutely. another thing. So don't think too much uh, about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, I can agree to this so much because when you were talking about your story of being being at the global level uh, in the corporates, I have gone yes. through a similar journey and put in like 15, 16 years being at the wow. global levels, working across with so many countries and stuff. Yes, when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's it's a complete different game and. Yes, it's taught a Absolutely. lot of things. That's why uh, this is like become my passion to you know to uh, people out there. 
Fabulous, fabulous. I can really relate to what you're saying. And one last question before we take up the questions from the ladies here. What are your thoughts about the Transform Her initiative? You know, um, you're on this platform. What do you think about it? We've just started though. I, I think it's one of the most amazing platforms you've created and I want to congratulate you for that one more time, Tejaswini, because I think the moment you told me about it, I was quite excited. I was uh, very thrilled that there's someone here uh, who cares, apart from being an entrepreneur, a successful one yourself, um, you have actually moved beyond uh, a level of being selfish to hold on knowledge. I've always respected people who want to share and want to give to society because I think we the time has come when people uh, are in need of givers you know there are so many people who want to learn but there are not enough people to give information and give uh, enough knowledge so I think your platform is so beautiful that you not only empower you energize young minds you energize people who have queries and and as an entrepreneur there are a million queries and you are helping people and you're helping the whole process from ground zero to absolute or transformation level. I mean, what more can I say? I think it's a fabulous thing and I would really want, I don't know, you should have like brunches all over, you know, kind of expand it. This is like a huge movement. I will definitely be vocal about this uh, to a lot of other people and on platforms about what you're doing because I think it's amazing and I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that people who are engaging with you are definitely benefiting out of it and I'm sure their success stories will happen soon uh, if they're not already happening. And uh, I, I really, really want to congratulate you. I think this is an amazing thing because um, this is a selfless, beautiful platform that is doing so much and uh, for so little, you know, in terms of you. You are uh, in that space of just being this magnanimous person who is giving out so much. So fabulous fabulous is all i can say and that's where this mission of transform her really begins of course i do have a program also associated with this but that's absolutely as i said it's more of a giveaway than anything and uh, i'm really happy we've already enrolled two batches and people are doing really wow. good and yeah, and when, when we get people like you on this platform to talk, now this is an open platform, this is a free platform which we are providing learning on. It's not like any other platform where it's more about selling or you know entertainment. This platform is all about learning. So we are we are growing, we're growing good. We are six hundred women on the group, and I'm sure it's Wonderful. going. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to increase. I know women over here once they start getting value, they're going to have more people coming in. So that's. <laughs> happen wonderful wonderful you, that, yeah, Fantastic. That, yeah with, with what i heard from you that gives me a lot of uh, power to again you know take this up to the next level so <laughs> it was great 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 uh, inputs that you have shared so um, yes people if you have any questions we can take it up so it's about 5 20 in another uh, you know one or two questions if you have we can Go ahead. So somebody says, thank you, Kuljeet, ma'am. Thanks, Tejaswini, too, for giving us such knowledge. Fantastic. That's nice to hear. Yeah. If you pleasure. Have thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's let's go on. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Rupali has put in that. So we have people in the group. We have Heetal. We have Neha. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay. So... You know, there are a lot of women who uh, wait for things to happen. This is another thing that I want to kind of bring out. Mm. Don't mm. wait for things to happen. If you want to predict your future, then you create your future. Absolutely. Be, be the creator there and don't think that, okay, when things will happen or somebody will give me money, then I will start my business. Uh, when somebody, when things start looking up, then I will do something. You don't have to wait. The yeah. best part is that every situation or every moment is the best moment. And you can always, you know, the great part of the human mind is that you can always kind of really tweak things. You may not always work on a 100% perfection level. It's okay. You start at your 80, 90, even 70. It's okay. Get going first. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, it reminds me of this. Uh, I heard it somewhere. There was this high jumper, an Olympic high jumper, mm -hmm. who was being asked this question by somebody in the media, I think, who said, how do you manage to jump so high? And uh, he said very interestingly that I throw my heart over, my body follows. I thought that sentence. I was like, oh my God, this is an amazing thought. 
isn't it? So I, I would urge actually anyone who's within this uh, stream of things, you know, in terms of entrepreneurship, just push yourself out there. The rest will roll through. As long as you have enough burning passion from inside, I think it will happen. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. And I'm sure we're going to have people who are going to see this video later on and would have questions. I would um, still go and invite people to send in your questions across. We will have a look at those posts. If there is something that we want uh, Kuljit to come back and answer, Kuljit, we're going to, come back <laughs> to say that you know, this question needs your answer. I but would love to engage. No problem at all. I'm here to serve right now. So I'm just in my whole mode of contribution. So I would love to help anyone. Uh, they want to reach out, have their questions. You can invite me. I'd be happy to come back. I'm sure people are going to look at this a little later. And uh, if they have something, they'll be putting it down in the comments down there. Okay. But that's that's really been fabulous. Thank you so much. We are a little, uh, little overboard by about five minutes of your time. But that's okay. absolutely uh, no I think it's our pleasure, uh, you know, uh, having you here. Uh, thanks Thank for being so here. Much. Hope to connect back with you and uh, wish we could call you again sometime. With Certainly. Some I would love to be here one more time. I have no problem. I would love it. It's my delight and honor. And um, thank you for inviting me one more time. Thank you so much. And I wish I was able to give some advantage to your um, audience. And I hope that they have some takeaways. Absolutely. There are fabulous takeaways and I'm sure women are going to love doing or acting upon it. Thank you so, so much. much. Thanks and Pleasure. see you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.